Let's go! Merry Christmas! What great news this is! Liam Shanahan, LSU starting center, is coming back. Are you kidding me? And there could be an added bonus for him coming back to LSU. We will get to that in just a moment. But guys, this is great. LSU gets a key piece to their offensive line. The guy that's going to be calling on the shots next year. And here's the thing. He started kind of rough, but he just kept getting better and better and better. The Alabama game, Liam Shanahan stood out. And then after that, the Ole Miss game, he was excellent. The Florida game, he was even better, especially with the new quarterback on the road against Florida. What a way to announce it with our boy Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm not ever leaving. I'm not ever leaving. I'm not going to play the video, but obviously uh, this is huge. This is huge for LSU, which, as many of you know, has struggled to recruit the offensive line. And, you know, there's some positive momentum with Tristan Lee as well. We might get to that in this video. I'm not so sure. But let's focus right here on Liam Shanahan, the story from Glenn West. And you go down here to this part that's very interesting. What about Austin Deculus and Ed Ingram? The other two offensive linemen for LSU that had great years, Austin Deculus Not as great of a year as he had the year before with Joe Burrow, but he's still a solid starter that you would like to have back. Ed Ingram, you know, when he's healthy, he's dominant. Like I said, the best offensive performance this year, maybe from any LSU player, was Ed Ingram versus South Carolina. So, you know, those things are are out there. Obviously, both of these guys have played a lot of football for LSU, In particular, Deculus, who actually started last year. So, if Austin Deculus decides to come back, obviously LSU would welcome him with open arms. But I would also understand if he wanted to go to the NFL. Also, uh, this next recruiting class with Marlon Martinez and uh, Marcus Dummerville are very interesting. Garrett Dellinger's coming in. But notice two names that are missing from this. Anthony Bradford and Cardell Thomas, two top 15 guards from the same recruiting class, both of which just weren't factors this year, especially with a struggling offensive line that will also get Chasen Hines back next year. So with the way that LSU's offensive line is going to look next year, I I don't know who's actually going to be the starting guards, but it's very important that you got Liam Shanahan back, obviously Harvard transfer, um, a smart guy right up the middle, and this is just good. It's just good news, especially considering Liam Shanahan worked with both TJ Finley and Max Johnson. So to have continuity at a very important position, at a position you haven't really recruited all that well, is obviously very good news if you're an LSU Tiger. Liam Shanahan coming back bodes really well for getting Eric Wilson, another offensive lineman from Harvard that was in the transfer portal. And as you can see here, uh, transfer portal crystal ball looks pretty good. Ed Orgeron, his number one priority right now, our offensive lineman in the portal. And obviously, this is probably Ed Orgeron's top priority right now to get someone that is familiar with Liam Shanahan. Obviously, they played together at Harvard. Uh, To get him into the system at LSU would be very good. And obviously, Liam Shanahan coming back would be a a huge addition in getting Wilson, who was once initially committed to Auburn. So the crystal ball looks pretty good. Um, So it's interesting. We we shall see what happens uh, if LSU is able to pick up Eric Wilson to go along with Liam Shanahan. And hopefully, Eric Wilson can be a starter right away, or at least a rotational offensive lineman for LSU. Obviously, this is a big story for a lot of you regarding offensive line recruiting. Can LSU still find a way to get Tristan Lee to Baton Rouge? A lot of people tweeted out that Clemson's in the lead, and then some people say Florida's in the lead, and then some people say Clemson is in the lead, and then some people say Oklahoma's in the lead because Tristan Lee's friends with Caleb Williams, and da 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 So here's the thing. I wouldn't 
focus too much on one recruit's decision because wherever they go, all the power to them. I, in fact, feel a little weird pulling up a, a recruit's Twitter profile because I don't want you guys to go tweet this guy, but the reason why I pull it up is because Tristan Lee has been very active and Garrett Nussmeyer, a key recruiter and part of the class of 2021, there's been a huge push lead to LSU the hashtag. In fact, my video yesterday or from earlier today, honestly, um, regarding LSU football was the, the the first comment I believe was a lead to LSU hashtag. So a lot of you still really want Tristan Lee. Number one, he is a five star recruit. A lot of you get excited over that. And then, obviously, number two is he fills a huge need on the LSU offensive line. We won't know until January 2nd um, where Jardin Gilbert will also be making his announcement, where Corey Foreman will also be making his announcement, where he signed. So we will see what happens here. I don't have any other updates other than some tweets, which is why it's kind of weird to talk about this. But the lead to LSU hashtags have started to gain some steam from not only you guys. I do highly recommend, though, don't tweet them. Just enjoy your Christmas. Don't worry about a teenage off its alignment. It's, you know, it is important, okay? But it's also not important enough for you to not focus on your own family. So worry about that instead of trying to tweet them. You can talk about them. You can comment below about them. But, you know... You know, if he wants to come, he's made multiple visits. His mom has been on local radio, so obviously it would be very nice to have him. But if he doesn't decide to come, I wish him nothing but the best. Plus, Tristan Lee has a soccer background. I was a soccer player, so uh, that would be very cool if that if this were something to happen. So we have a little extra time here. Let's take a look at some of your comments. This is from Bruce. Move Matthew Lingwater running back and use him as your third down back. Great hands, rat runner, and runs a little like Christian McCaffrey, okay? Uh, he has a lot of potential, just needs to put on 20 pounds over the offseason. Six foot, 205 would be a great weight for him. So, uh, you know, I actually like this outside-the-box thinking. I, I was referencing, you know, a big part of the LSU offense was throwing two running backs out of the backfield, which obviously is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. And ironically, Kev Falk, his best trade in the NFL was – catching footballs out of the backfield from Tom Brady, which ironically, LSU, no matter who the quarterback was, no matter who the running back was, really struggled catching the football out of the backfield. So that's something LSU is really going to work on. Now, I don't know much about Matthew Langlois' receiving ability. Um, I don't know if I would compare him to uh, Christian McCaffrey because Christian McCaffrey is one of a kind. Arvis and Marcus here two of our smartest commenters, um, you know, he, he corrected me about uh, what my, my comments about Nick Saban and his ability to change to a more passing-oriented offense. Carvis is right, though. I mean, they still have Najee Harris, and they still have two running backs that have won the Heisen Trophy, trophy, trophy within the past decade. Alabama still does run the ball, but a big reason why is because their offensive line is so much better than every other offensive line in the SEC outside of Texas A&M. So, and they're still better than Texas A&M's line. So, yeah, uh, obviously LSU's got to get their offensive line better, and this video is a, a good start with getting Liam Shanahan back. And it does help when you have a back like Najee Harris, who's not only good, he's been good for every year he's been in Alabama. And to have him come back and be the player that he is now – is just incredible, and it does, you know, begin to make you wonder about uh, John Emery. Well, John Emery, now he wasn't as high of a prospect as Najee Harris, but they were both five stars. Will John Emery be the guy that we expect him to be? We we'll have to wait and see. Um, and obviously, Marcus uh, continues here. Uh, Saban brought in Pete Golding because of his success running a four-two-five, and Pete Golding. Uh, has been a success as Alabama's defensive coordinator. I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas, okay? We'll do a live stream on Saturday. I don't know what time yet, but we will do one, okay? Um, 
I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what the best time is. I think it'll be around 5, 6, or 7-ish. So just look out on the channel on Saturday, and we'll have like a little thing set up, okay? It's power. Hour. LSU. Boom. Bomb, bomb, bomb. I just ate a Popeye's chicken sandwich, so I don't know how energetic I was for this video. Um, and I just did a three-hour radio show, but this is just great news. Let's go, Liam. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I got to do this thing. I'll just turn the light off and...